Okay, welcome back, and uh, we're now going into part three, which is focus. Let's review quickly. The big picture is understanding why the rich are getting richer. Recommend you play the cash flow game at, at least four times to get to understanding it. Step four is about emotional intelligence. Can you handle stress and winning and losing and all that? Because, like I said, in the world of money, there are winners and there are losers and uh, things like this. Step two was clarity. So clarity is where you begin to understand, do you really want to go any further? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with the girl. The world needs employees, and the, you know, and the government needs to take care of people and all that, and that's up to you. So by clarity, you should know what you want to do with the rest of your life, whether you're going to be rich, poor, middle class, average, what do you want to do? And then clarity requires a little bit more time, a little bit more money. In clarity, I recommend our Rich Dad coaching program. And at that point, you get it clear. It's not about what I'm saying. It's about what you're saying to yourself. What do you want? And like I said, I have three coaches almost constantly working on me because I want to be successful in my life. I like winning. I hate losing. And I like beating people who are not don't have coaches. I just like to win. And Donald likes to win. And there's winners hang out with winners. And losers hang out with losers. So that's why I have a coach. I have a physical coach. I go to the gym. He kicks my butt. I have an emotional coach and I have a business coach guiding me primarily up here, you know, not how to climb the corporate ladder, but how to put a deal together. Like in forming my three IPOs, which I've done, they, they were horrifying. I mean, the red tape, the risk, the things I had to go through was incredible. And without my coach, his name is Frank, without him getting me through it, I don't think I was taking those companies public. It was just too much stress. So smart people have coaches and losers sit on the couch and watch, watch the NFL and eat Cheetos. You know, that's about <laughs> it. So that's what clarity is. And now we're coming to focus. And the reason I bring up focus is focus stands for follow one course until successful. And the reason focus is so important is up to you to find out what your true genius is. And I know one of the things I really hated about school, I was always labeled stupid, you know, lazy, incompetent. And I just hated it. And it wasn't that I was stupid. I was just not interested. You know, I didn't want to study what they wanted me to study. How dare they? I didn't want to become an employee, you know, go to school and get a job. I didn't want to become a doctor. I wanted to be an entrepreneur who invested. And, and the more I wanted that, the more I got pounded on. So I really tend to believe that everybody has a genius. But it's up to you to develop your genius. For example, Tiger Woods' genius, obviously, is on the golf course. When he walks onto the golf course, his genius soars, but he has to work really hard to get his genius out. Does that make sense, guys, here? Yes. He'd probably not be, he would probably not be that successful as a jockey. You know, he can work, run as hard as he wants, but he's just too heavy for that horse. You know? And like, I, I liked football, but I love rugby. So when you find out what you really love, and it took me until 24 to find out what I really love was a game of rugby, the moment I found it, then I wanted to get in shape, then I wanted to run. I traveled the world playing rugby all over the world. And I love real estate. It doesn't mean that I expect you to love real estate. I just love it. I don't care if I'm winning or losing. I mean, I do care, but I love it. You know, I'm playing to win. One game is stock options. I understand it. I've taken my stock option class. What I found out is I don't love it. I don't like to sit in there going, rrr, rrr, rrr. you know. I like putting deals together. I love real estate, and I love entrepreneurship. I love building companies. I like selling my companies. I think it's the best game in town. So I'm not doing this for the money. I am really focused on what game I want to play. Does that make sense to you guys here? Yes. But it's up to you to understand yourself. If you don't like real estate, don't do it. But find something you're passionate about. You know, we have courses in the, in the Rich Dad Education Program, I call it our, our business school. In the business school program in Focus, when you start focusing, I want to be a land developer. So I bought a lot of land. I'm going to practice being a land developer. So we, if you don't want to, do, you know, so if you're interested, take the, take the land development course. If you like options, we have a stock options course. If you want to be, you know, a foreclosure person, focus on being a foreclosure person. Does that make sense to you guys here? I understand what I like best. My wife loves apartment buildings. She loves them. Why? I don't know. But 
she just gets all excited about them. So the key to finding your genius is find out what game you want to play. Everybody clear on that? Yes. And so that's what focus is about, is more time, more money. Our courses are more expensive, require more focus, require more attention and all this. So that's what the Rich Dad program is about, is in the big picture, if you have little money or a lot of money, you can still come and play for free or for very little cost, just to cover the cost of the club sometimes. And over here, requires a little bit more time, a little bit more money, a little bit more focus here. Now, what the experts, the financial experts will tell you, don't focus, they tell you to diversify. So that's why when you see it, this is step three right now, we're getting to step three, and they're saying over here, you know, live below your means, save money, get out of debt. Everything I hate doing, I don't, who does not like living below your means? I love living above my means. You know, I love it. So why would I want to follow that idiot's program of telling me to live below my means? And diversify, diversify, diversify. Basically what they're saying is turn your money over to them. I have a plan for your money. It's to put it in my pocket. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because I have people I turn my money over to. My point here is this. Do you know good advice from bad advice? Do you know a good advisor from a bad advisor? Does that make sense to you guys here? Yes. And when you, when you start to focus as your financial IQ goes up, you can tell more. Which is good, who is good, who is bad, who works. You know, sometimes a person works for you, but it may not work for your friend. You know, that's it. Who is a good doctor, who is a bad doctor. That's up to you to understand that. So this is the thing that Warren Buffett, the world's greatest investor, says about diversification, which the experts, who are generally salespeople, again, that's why they're called brokers. They're salespeople. They're not rich people. And what Warren Buffett says, diversification is for people who don't know what they're doing. And my question I'll, I often ask in this book here, is it time for you to get out of the rat race? If you don't have one, please get to read it. This is Don't Be a Loser. Is if you take financial advice from a loser, you become a loser. Very simple. And so the reason most financial advisors are not rich is because they're not playing to win, they're playing not to lose. And that's good. If you don't want to lose, invest with them. Does that make sense, you guys, here? Yes. Okay. But what you'll find out is that the problem is, is if you don't know what you're doing, how do you know if the financial advisor knows what they're doing? And most of them don't know what they're doing. Most of them take, you know, as I say, it takes longer to become a massage therapist than a financial planner. They have more training. And these guys are playing with your future, not just your body. You guys clear on that right now? Hello? Yes. yes. I want you to understand that clearly. If you're stupid, you don't know a good advisor from a bad advisor. Good advice from bad advice. Good investment from a bad investment. Am I clear? Yes. Okay. So, moving on with focus, I don't diversify. Focus again stands for what? Follow one course until successful. And I'm very focused on real estate. I am very focused on entrepreneurship. I've done the other courses like options trading and forex trading and stuff like this. I enjoyed it. I made money. I didn't love it. And how can you be smart if you don't love it? Okay, that's the main issue here. So going into step number eight here. <clears throat> what most financial advisors prey upon <laughs> is the emotion, which we studied in four, fear. Oh, investing is risky. Give your money to me. I'll manage your money. I'll take care of your money. <laughs> you know, you must put your money in a well-diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, foreign exchange, a little, a little, you know, a little China fund, a little European fund, a little African fund. But it's so risky that I am the expert, and you have to give it to me. People know what I'm talking about right now? <laughs> and they depend upon your fear, which will be covered in step four, on emotional intelligence. That if you have fear, they go for your wallet. Oh, thanks, that guy really knows what he's talking about. Does that make sense, guys, here? Yes. And that's the problem. So you don't know if this guy is wearing a mask, is the fear for real and all that. So. Going on with it, the number one thing people say is investing is risky. And I'll show you this 
diagram right now so you understand. Covering too much material here. There's three basic asset classes. Number one is a business. Number two, real estate. Number three, paper assets. Those are the three basic asset classes you find inside a asset, an, an asset column. Okay, businesses can make you the richest the fast. This is Michael Dell, Bill Gates, the guys that created Google, Steve Jobs. Business is the best. The problem with business, it requires the highest financial IQ. You have to be pretty smart. It's taken me a long time to gain that information, education. Number two is real estate. The reason I like real estate is my banker likes it. But this also requires financial IQ, as I said, if you're going to use debt. Okay. Paper assets require the least financial IQ. And that's why most of these guys who are doing this, nothing wrong with them. I buy, I buy stocks, bonds, and stuff. I don't buy mutual funds, but I buy stocks and bonds. And the reason is I don't even understand the stuff. But these guys here who are talking about fear, they're selling probably 100% of the time, they're selling paper. They're selling stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Got it? Or REITs, R-E-I-T, Real Estate Investment Trust. And they prey upon your fear. And they say they're going to take care of the risk. But of all the investments, this is the highest of risk investment. The single highest. Does that make sense, guys, here? Yes. So because people don't know, people are putting their money in this. Now, if you have no financial IQ, put your money here. It's a smart thing to do. But with a rich dad company says, we think you have a better chance of higher returns, less risk up here. But you have to have your financial IQ. Is that clear, you guys, here? Okay, take one minute to discuss what you just heard. This is one reason why investing is not risky. If you're if high financial IQ, is very simply this: when you look at income, expense, assets, and liabilities. If I am a professional real estate investor or a business owner, I have control of this, 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 and insurance. If you're a stock owner or a mutual fund owner or whatever the paper assets or savings, you have no control over this, 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 or this. So the issue with, the issue with reduces risk One word is lack of control. And the reason I don't like mutual funds is I don't have control of this. I don't know what their expenses are. They don't have to give me a financial statement. How dare they? It's called lack of transparency. I mean, why would you buy something where they're not going to tell you how much money they're taking out of your pocket? There's a guy named John Bogle. He founded the Vanguard family of funds. He calls it the biggest, he's a, and he's a mutual fund guy, not me. He says the mutual fund companies are just ripping off investors left and right. So are the CEOs of most companies, just ripping them off. And they're spending money like it's going out of style, and the true owner is a guy that owns the stock, has no say in it. Why would you do that? I don't know. I really don't know. So number one cause of risk is lack of control. If you have financial IQ, which is what the Rich Dad Company teaches, you want control of all of these things. Is that clear, you guys here? Yes, sir. Okay, the other thing that is of control is a thing called markets. Okay. On, the, on the Rich Dad card, I mean the cash flow game, you have the market card over here. Right? And basically what markets mean is you're watching for trends. So a, a true investor is watching the trend, where this market running and all that. So as all of you know, you know, markets go up, markets come down, like this stuff. That's what it looks like. There's a saying, and so, and, but what, why most people are, think is risky is if you have a mutual fund and your price is here, what can you do if it goes down? Answer is nothing. All they say to you is, ah, invest for the long term. <laughs> Don't worry, the market will change. <laughs> loser. You know, I mean, come on. Sit there and take a pounding. What a loser you are. Don't pull it out, but pull it out, I'll take a commission anyway. <laughs> Am I making a sense, you guys, here? Yes. Stocks, bonds, most people cannot do anything about this trend. 
So the day traders come in and all this. But that's why the second part of the cash flow game is called cash flow 202. You still need the game board. You still need this. But 202 is, teaches you how to handle trends in the market. And it's called, by, it's called buying insurance. So one way of controlling risk is by buying insurance. So two, 202, you need 101. So you can play 101 at least eight times. Then you shift it, you graduate to this thing here. We also have the electronic version of it. And this is the graduation game when you complete all of this. Okay? So 202 teaches people a very important part of investing, and this is called technical investing. So I don't care if it's stocks, bonds, real estate, businesses, all things go up and down. Does that make sense, guys, here? Right now, is Detroit going up or down? Down. 50 years ago, they were going up. It happens to everybody. Microsoft right now might be on its way down because Google is on its way up. And that's business. It happens everywhere. As a surfer, as a kid growing up in Hawaii, we understood cycles and things like this. The difference here is with called insurance. When I buy a piece of real estate, my banker requires me to have insurance. insurance. When I have a business, I'm required to have what? Insurance. insurance. You have a 401k, you have no, what? No insurance. You have no insurance with a mutual fund or 401k. That's why these guys say investing is risky. Put it in a safe, well-diversified 401k. And they're giving you the worst financial advice possible because you can't buy insurance on it. You know, during that last market crash in 2000, many baby boomers lost their entire retirement believing this. Put it in a well, safe, well-defined mutual fund full of... So I wrote this book here called Prophecy. Wall Street loved this book. It's about the coming, big, the biggest real estate crash, I mean, the biggest uh, stock market crash coming. So Smart Money, Money Magazine, Wall Street Journal, they came after me as usual, you know, because they want to protect their advertisers, the mutual fund companies. So I think it's a big ripoff, but that's up to you. It's good, you know, it's better than nothing. But anyway, so what a professional investor does is if, if the market's here, what can they do? They can buy a put option. So in case it goes down, they don't lose all their money. If the market is over here, what can they do? They don't know. You sit and watch it. Okay. <laughs> if you're down over here, you can buy a call option. Okay. There's also one more, th one more thing you can do. Is when one, one thing is up here, you can sell a short position. This is all vocabulary. I don't expect you guys to understand it right now. But what happens in a short position, you actually make money when the market crashes. I had a friend of mine who bought a dot-com up here, and he shorted it. And when it came down here, he made like almost like $12 million. So the thing here is that winners, this is my point. If you know, this is called technical investing, which is cash flow 202. The more you play it, your mind will actually begin to shift, to think, to think of ups and downs of markets. Am I clear, you guys, here? Yes. You get to think differently. It's up in here. It's like when I surfed, you know, it's up, down, up, down. This is fluid motion, same as in business. All right, so that's why the difference is the 202 will train people to do that. So the point is whether the market, when the market's going up, you win. Market comes down, you what? Win. Market goes down, you win more. It doesn't make any difference. So financial intelligence is more important to me than listening to somebody like this who's telling you investing is risky, turn your money over to me. And they put you in the worst asset class possible called stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Does that make sense, you guys, here? Yes. So that's what 202 does and all this. So let me give you another point of view on that. We all know there's, in the market, there's bulls and what? Bears. Bears. So the saying is, so a bull is somebody who thinks the market's going to go what? Up. And a bear is somebody who thinks the market's going to come down. It's always in the market forces, always. There's always somebody who thinks it's going to go up, and always somebody thinks it's going to come down. And we find out who's right, okay? 
So there's another saying that goes, bulls come up the stairs, the bears go out the window. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is when it comes down, this may take years to develop, but when it comes down, it comes down like this. So the bull goes up the stairs, the bear goes out the window. So that's why busts are so much faster, so much harder. So I'll demonstrate it with this. This is the bull going up the window. So most successful investors, they like to invest about this point when there's nothing going on, when everybody's kind of out of the market, okay? And then so one investor says, oh, so-and-so isn't buying that fund. I should buy that, you know? So it starts to go. And about this point is when the bears turn into bulls. All the chicken little people. Oh, investing is so risky, risky. So this could be real estate. It could be the dot com. It could be private equity. So let's remember the dot com or the real estate. So in real estate, this has been about 19, I mean 2004. And all of these guys started piling in. Suddenly, everybody became mortgage brokers, invest. You know, they became real estate agents. They became real estate developers. They jump in here. This is when the losers pile on because they've been so afraid all this time. They were, they were waiting for some sign from God to tell them to get in. See, when it was really flat, well, I don't know. What should I invest in? Nothing to invest in. <laughs> You know, and this is when the pros are coming in. This is when the amateurs come in. Am I making sense, you guys, here? Yeah, yeah. So it goes. <laughs> then the next question is, is there a bubble? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, this time it's different. You know. <laughs> and they keep coming in. And this is when the amateurs really get on board. <laughs> you know, they start buying a million dollar house and they're going to flip it for two million dollars because they think the market's always going to go up. Are you guys ready for it? So do you have an example of the bull going up the stairs? And the bear goes out the window, and who goes out with them? All the amateurs. All those people who are flippers and real estate experts. I have a friend who's developing condos right now, and he's only been a real estate like four years. He's put his entire life savings on some condos, in a place that nobody wants to live. <laughs> Am I making sense, you guys, here? Yeah, yes. So that's why cash flow 202 is so essential, is it teaches people to understand that mark, all markets go up and all markets come yeah. down. And when the, when the bubble is the biggest, it's when all the losers pile on. And those are the chicken littles. They say, oh, no, this time it's different. And they turn from chickens into bulls just as the bears go out the window. OK? So there's several other things I want to talk about that a person can have. I always buy insurance. But you can't buy insurance on mutual funds or a 401k. That's risky. Why would you do that? Well, maybe, I don't, I don't, maybe you can. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it'd be silly enough to do that. So the reason Prophecy is such a powerful book is because there is a law in the 401k program or a rule that when you turn age 66, you must start withdrawing your, mon your money. Because the government wants to tax you at that time. So you got to pull your money out. So when the money starts coming out, do you think people will start putting money in? No. And if people start pulling money out, it goes down. So that's what prophecy is about. I don't know if it's going to come true, but it sure scared the crap up. Man, it scared the you know what of a lot of people, okay? The other thing is here is this, is that one of the ways I protect myself is through asset protection. It's called own your own corporation. My poor dad always wanted everything in his own name. 
He says, you know, my house is in my name. My car is in my name. That's a real loser, poor person point of view. If you want to be rich, you want to own nothing and keep everything inside a corporate entity. It could be an S corporation, LLC, C corporation, partnerships, things like this. So that's what Garrett Sutton wrote this book, but own your own corporation. Because there's two people after your money. One is the government. And you can, you can play lots of games with taxes by a, via a corporation. You can't do it if you're an employee. But the empl if the employees did what this book said, the employee would go to jail. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, the e that, that's the difference between these guys and everybody else. So, they, so, so these guys constantly use asset protection. One of the most goofy entities that these guys use especially, oh, my balloon, the bust. <laughs> the goofiest thing, they use sole proprietorships, and people use partnerships. Why do they do that? Because their accountant told them to do that. So the mistake here is this. You want your accountant to do taxes, and you want your attorney to do asset protection. Don't let an accountant do asset protection because they'll recommend sole proprietorships and partnerships, which are extremely risky. So just read this book. I'm not an accountant or attorney, but read this book here. So I have nothing in my name. I own nothing. And the poor and middle class want it in their name. So the second person, so the government wants your money, and the second person that wants your money is, are lawsuits. If you're planning on getting rich, own a corporation. If you're planning on being poor, you don't need a corporation. Does that make sense to you guys here? Yes. Because you got nothing to steal anyway. All right? So that's my thing on investing is risky. What is really, really risky, in my opinion, is not being fi financially educated, which is cash flow 202. And then taking advice from people who are putting you in the riskiest of all investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and 401ks. Your insurance agent won't insure 401ks, won't, in, won't insure your stocks or bonds or mutual funds. That means you have to learn how to do it. All of my real estate, all of my uh, businesses, and my personal wealth is protected via corporations. So that's why investing is not risky. What is risky is listening to these guys and not being financially educated. Thank you. Discuss what you just learned. Thank you very much.